Good morning. It is uh, wonderful to see you all here. Welcome to uh, Manuel Baptist uh, Church. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is uh, good, good to be alive. The, uh, well, I'm thinking of it, the beautiful flowers on the communion table are the handiwork of Cinda O'Brien, who, these are all out of your personal gar, that's amazing. Thank you. She's been bringing in uh, flowers to, uh, to bless us, which is great. Uh, three, uh, three quick uh, disclaimer uh, slides for those of you on Zoom and uh, Facebook, uh, actually those of you on Facebook. Uh, the things that follow us on Facebook, we don't endorse or direct them. Secondly, if you lose uh, the feed, if you're watching us and you lose the feed, go to our website and the entire service will be, uh, will be brought up on the website and on our YouTube channel. And thirdly, if you're a guest, if you're a guest on Zoom or uh, on Facebook, just go to our website and hit contact us. That's a way to get a message to, to me and I'll respond. And if you're here and you have an update on a prayer concern or uh, some, something, that, a question that you have, use the use the prayer cards and jot down something. Uh, that's a really helpful way for you to give information to me. A lot of times you're giving me an update on a prayer concern or a, one, a current one or one that uh, is new or one that uh, we are updating. So please, uh, please use those. Uh, some, some guys are going to get together at 9 o'clock tomorrow. We're going to go fishing uh, at uh, North, uh, North Bend. If you'd like to join us, uh, just Give me, give me a call or, uh, or email me or talk to me right after the service. Uh, we're going to meet here at 9. Let me know if, you're gonna, if you plan to meet here. If, uh, depending on who's going, we may, we may go, go directly there and meet, meet there. So, but I will meet you here if you'd, like to, uh, if you'd like to be part of that. Women's Bible Study starting a new uh, series tomorrow. So uh, make note of that. Grief Share is uh, coming up soon. Uh, First Fruits Table has... Uh, has all kinds of items from your garden. Please uh, check it out and take some things home. And then the uh, Women's Care uh, Banquet is coming up at Grand Point on October 7th. So uh, we have a table of 10. If that is a ministry that you are interested in and you're willing to go to a banquet which is designed to raise money, uh, our table is going to be filled with check writers. <laughs> so uh, we'll feed you. But we also want you to be ready to contribute to uh, the Women's Care Center because they, with COVID and everything, their their funding cycle, uh, we need they need to raise uh, good money at the at this uh, banquet. So let me know. We'd love for you to be at our table. And last but not least, before we hear our uh, prelude, uh, it is almost impossible to cool this space in a way that makes everybody happy. And I, I've heard, uh, if if. Uh, the way, the way this is laid out is that there is one there is one vent up here on the podium level, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's, uh, there's eight, ten vents over you, and the thermostats are on this wall. So the, the this warm area up here is driving all of the vents in the cold area out there. The good news is is, is if you all approve the capital renovation, we will fix this. Um, so, if you're uh, if you're really tired of being cold, I want you to get your money out when we, because we have a plan. 
Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're, we're, we're going to do the best we can. If you're absolutely uh, freezing, we're going to bring some parkas and have them available in the back for you. So God is good. I hope you feel the warmth of his spirit today as we worship together. said amen our song uh, today is a I think a familiar uh, praise song you are my king uh, it's kind of a prayer to the Lord um, sing it to the Lord as we sing together I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken. You were condemned I'm alive and well Your spirit is within me Because you died and rose again
Speak to us today, Father. We come from many different places. Uh, we may be struggling or hurting uh, or celebrating, but wherever we are, uh, by your spirit, speak to us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Praise the Lord. Now let us sing together, Come Thou Almighty King. It's found in your hymnals in page 267 if you don't want to follow the screen. the words that uh, half the people can't sing, so it's not working. Uh, where are we on the words? Right there. Come down, holy come. Come, holy come. Okay, right there. Let's do it. Sorry. We, everybody was mumbling, so let's go from right here. <laughs> come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glass.
Kindle in us the fire of your love. Open our hearts to hear your word. Give Pastor Kurt the words you want us to hear. Send us out to spread your love. And now we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn now and greet one another, keeping in mind not everybody wants to shake hands. Maybe they blew out. Oh. It's a problem with not having acolytes. If there are any children here, or children at heart, uh, I just want to share something with you really fast before we get started. Um, Oh, I guess. (laughs) I don't know what he's doing either. I I usually. Hey, what you doing? (laughs) I looked everywhere. I can't find. Oh, wait. I haven't looked over here. Nope. 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 Whoa. whoa. <laughs> what are you doing with a hair dryer? This isn't mine. <laughs> well, it's certainly not mine. <laughs> nope. Whoa. Nope. 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 No, it's not here. It's not here. It's not here. What are you looking for? Somebody told me this is God's house, and he's not here. I've looked everywhere. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is silly, isn't he? Okay. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Thank you, folks. <laughs> we'll be... I don't even know how to follow that. Okay. <laughs> So, when, you, when you're looking for God, you, you're, God's not somebody you can actually physically touch. You can't actually look around and say, hey, that's God. Except, the Bible tells us that God lives in all of us. And really, we, as the church, not this building, are where God lives. Oh, so he's not like physically like here no, hiding. He is here in the spirit. I wish somebody would have told me that. I've looked at this entire church all morning. But I'm glad to know that now. That's good. Isn't it important that we remember that we're the house of God? This isn't this is a place where we, the house of God, the, the church, come and we worship together. This building is important, but it's not the church. We're the church and you're the church. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you have made your house in us, that we are, we are the church, that uh, everywhere that we go, we take the church with us. And it's not just here on Sunday morning that we're the church. We're the church everywhere that we go. We're the church at school, and we're at the church at, at, at the grocery store, and we're the church at home. Help us to remember that all the time, that whenever people come and talk to us, they are, they are talking to someone who's, who's part of the church, your church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys.
uh, speaking, speaking of the church, we have uh, Deb, this might be a time, you're going to go that way? Deb Bunch is here, and I wanted her to just uh, offer a, uh, a greeting, because uh, she's, she's in from Huntington, and a lot of you know, a lot of you know her from uh, years past, so I just wanted you to say hi. Hello, everyone. I'm really grateful to be here this morning. Um, it just feels good to be here in this church. Uh, so grateful for all of you who, all your prayers and all your help and everything. I live in Huntington, West Virginia now, and um, I finished LPN school. And uh, I'm an LPN at St. Mary's Medical Center. And then in two weeks, I start St. Mary's RN program. So i um, doing well. The kids are doing well. They're growing. And uh, thank you all. Thank you. Talking about being in the church, uh, Deb was in my uh, life class, and she said, you know, the, the Lord brought us to uh, Emmanuel. We, and they were here for about six, seven years. And she said it was a, um, I think you said when you came here, you felt people, people gathered around you. Uh, loved you and encouraged you, and she said that was such an important thing for me at that time in my life. So, anyway, that's uh, the Lord is here and He lives in us and our in the Spirit that that flows through us, hopefully to others. Um, uh, Judy Prater and the adult ministry have decided that we're not going to do a combined uh, ministry fair where we have 40 uh, booths on tables in the fellowship hall and you would walk around on one Sunday. Instead, we decided that we're going to highlight a different ministry every Sunday, which means that we will have a ministry fair from August through February. Um, we have a different ministry to present to you every Sunday, and hopefully you will look at these and say, oh, that's, that's what I'm interested in, or that's what I'd like to do, or I'd like to know more about that. So we're going to start with uh, audiovisual, and uh, Jerry Hamilton has uh, very appropriately uh, made a video to take you behind the scenes up there and to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and maybe how you can get involved. So let's watch this. Welcome to the broadcast booth at Emmanuel Baptist Church. My name is Jerry Hamilton, for those who don't know me. And uh, I'm up here kind of one of those guys out of sight, out, you know, out of mind, hopefully. But I'm part of a team up here that, in my opinion, helps spread the word of God. Jesus told us to feed his sheep. That's what we hope to do up here on Sunday morning. A uh, little more than a year ago, this was just called the sound booth because <laughs> basically that's all we did. We had sound and we showed some slides. COVID changed all that. We had to think outside the box and come up with a new way to get God's word out to the people. So we have started uh, today. We live stream on Facebook. We do Zoom. We record the service and put it on YouTube and on our ebcwv.com website. So this effort requires more than one or two people. The very minimum we need is three people. We hope you see something here that will excite you and want you to be part of this team. Uh, here we have is, is where we have two cameras that, that we control, have view. We, this is where we broadcast our service out to Facebook, Zoom. Uh, this one computer does a whole lot of magic right here. And, and this is a, a Probably not the place to start, but it's, it's a place to, to, if you're excited about this, we, we want you to come and learn. Uh, right here in the middle, we have uh, an iPad which runs our uh, Easy Worship slide uh, show. So when you see the slides and the words to the songs up on the screen, they're coming from, from this person here in the middle. Over on my left, your right, probably, let's see, my right, your left, would be the soundboard. That person controls all the different microphones 
uh, and so forth and helps send the sound over to the computer where it then goes out to the world and, and, and is recorded. So hopefully one or more of these things is something uh, that if you find interesting or maybe you'd like to learn all of them. We, we hope you'll come and join us. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun. This is something that we feel uh, in my situation, I'm not a great speaker. It's my way of spreading the word because uh, I'm just a nuts and bolts kind of guy. So uh, feel, we, we want you to feel welcome. Come and join us if you see something that here that you think is good. Truly, uh, truly been a godsend. Uh, I was talking to someone this week who is a regular part of our church, and they haven't been with us since uh, March of last year. But uh, uh, she said every Sunday we are we are tuned in, and she said it, it still feels like we're a part of our church. She said I see what's happening, and I worship with you. So anyway, that's just invaluable. But to do that, we need we've we've got a great crew, but it, they they travel or they can't make a Sunday. So we've got to be, uh, we've got to get a bench. <laughs> we've got to get a few more people. Uh, and by the way, uh, Jerry has made a, a tutorial uh, video that will take you through the soundboard. And uh, Adam is going to make a tutorial video to take you through the camera thing. So you'll be able to go into the cloud and watch these uh, tutorial videos. And then you'd basically go up there and shadow someone. And then you, we'd put you, we'd put you on the but you have you go live. Um, really, all of you are invited to do this, except maybe John Nicholson. He's the only one that I'm thinking that. Because um, we want people that are we want people that are coordinated and competent, and uh, just don't I'm not sure that uh, John will 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 think about that. Uh, Jerry mentioned that uh, he felt like uh, we are spreading the word. He's getting to spread the word about the Lord through the AV ministry. And another, uh, another way that the word is literally spread is through the Gideons. And so uh, Bob Naylor, uh, he comes and joins us once a year to uh, remind us of the, uh, of the good work of the, of the Gideons. I'm, I, do a, uh, I do a Bible study once a month at Colonial House, and Bob's uh, mother, Naomi, is there. And I always bring up Bob, and uh, she lights up. I don't, you cannot be as amazing as she thinks you are. Uh. It'll be 96 Tuesday. 96 on Tuesday, wow. Okay. I'd like to share with you briefly a testimony about a young boy named Ron German. He grew up in Cleveland in a Jewish community. You see, the Holy Spirit laid his hand on Ron and said, find out about Jesus. But he couldn't ask anybody because the only time he ever heard Jesus' name spoken was a curse word. So he went to the library. He found a book, an etching of Jesus hanging on a cross that touched his heart. He didn't understand it, but he knew it was important. Now, fast forward several years, Ron is in college in Cincinnati, and down there he has a friend that had just gotten married, and his wife was terminally ill, only hours to live. Remarkable. The doctors had given up, really. And his friend and his wife had knelt down and prayed through and got saved. And then they reached with prayer and they prayed that she would be spared. And God in his marvelous way spared her life. Unfortunately, her kidneys didn't do so well because of the illness. That's no problem for a Christian. They prayed again. In fact, they asked Ron to pray. Ron didn't know what to do hardly. But they prayed. And this has been several years ago. And the one chance in six million, she got the right kidney in time and she was spared. Now, go even further into the middle part of Ron's life. He was a salesman. He was traveling up in uh, Columbus area at a mall. 
he stopped and he heard this man and his wife speaking. He was so enamored by this man's voice that he said, you must be a announcer. And the man says, yes. And he says, Ron says, what do you announce? I announce Jesus. Whoa. It's like a struggle. You see, the Holy Spirit wants you. The devil doesn't want to give you up. And that was a body blow because that hit him right where he had been hurt. Jesus. So the man mailed him a recording of Jesus. In fact, it was the book of Matthew. And that's the gospel that is sent to the Jews specifically. God always knows what to do. It finally come down to, he was on a sales call in the Columbus area, stopped at a motel, sat down, had heard a lot of the gospel of Matthew. He had an urging to pull out the Gideon Bible. He opened it, flipped through it, and there was only one verse in the whole Bible that was marked with a highlighter yellow. And it was Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Here God is asking Ron to be saved. Well, a few weeks went by and his head was spinning now. He was hit hard that last time. God was setting him up for the uppercut. He came back to the same motel, different room, he found the Bible, and again, only one verse highlighted. Romans 10, verse 9. And that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That dropped him to his knees. There by his bed, he prayed through. He said, God, I believe, I believe, I believe. He had fought this since a young boy. And now he came to the point of offering his heart to Jesus. So simple. And now I'm sure he's witnessing to his Jewish family. Praise God. Thank you. We uh, have an opportunity today to support the Gideons. Um, we're not going to pass the plate, but if you, uh, if you would like to contribute, you can give it to me, or uh, we'll have a, uh, someone, someone will be in the, uh, in the narthex there, and if you have some cash or would like to write a check, it'll all go to distributing Bibles in, uh, in, our, in our area. As we, uh, as we come to the uh, offertory, there is a, there's an insert in your... Um, in your bulletin today that really has a, a couple of things in it. It has our Wednesday night meal. Um, you're welcome to join us every Wednesday night at 5. Uh, it also has got a reminder that we're doing a, a, a farewell lunch for the Delgados the last Sunday of August. You need to let us know if you're coming, if you're going to stay that Sunday, and then uh, Jonathan will preach, and then we'll have the lunch, and kind of need to know if, if, you're, if you're coming. By the way, those of you that are on Facebook and Zoom, thank you for... Uh, Thank you for giving. You can see where you can send there. You can send your, um, your offerings to, to the church by mail or go to the uh, website and you can give, give online. Also, the insert has a reminder of the Fall Golden Ears uh, Conference, September 13th through the 15th. Is that at Parchment Valley? Yeah. So I'm sure that Judy Prater would love to tell you more about what's going on there. And then last but not least, the insert mentions the uh, Mountain State Offering which uh, we take in August. All that we collect from Mountain State goes to support the West Virginia Baptist Convention. Margaret Fries uh, told me after the first service that there is a interactive bulletin board uh, down the hallway and there's all these people that you probably know and she has a, a challenge for you to uh, identify, see how many people you can uh, uh, identify. Uh, before, we, uh, before Blaine Hesch uh, shares a wonderful solo, just a reminder for those of you on Facebook and Zoom, if you need prayer, please uh, call uh, 304-485-5171. Someone is available to pray with you.
Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name. But his love abideth ever. Through eternal years the same. All the height and depth of mercy, all the length and breadth of love, all the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus. In his cross my trust shall be. Till with clearer, brighter vision, face to face my Lord I see. of endless life above, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me given us. Thank you for the open hearts who have given of their time and treasures. Bless these gifts to your good service and keep our hearts open to the needs of others. In Jesus' holy name, amen. The scripture reading right now I'll be reading from the NIV. It is Joshua 7, verses 19 through 26. I hope I don't run out of spit. <laughs> then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 shekels of silver, and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent and there it was, 
hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites, and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent, and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor ever since. I wanted to share a few uh, praises. Uh, today we have some uh, uh, pictures. Oh, uh, those of you, that, again, that are, that are watching on Facebook or Zoom, if you'd like to call, if you'd like for someone to pray with you, there's a, there's a number for you to, for you to call, 485-5171. Um, the youth are at Cedar Point in Ohio, Sandusky, Ohio, and you can just, there's a, seven or eight of those, you can just go through them, but uh, Jonathan texted me last night and he said that they're having such a good time and the youth wanted to thank the church because a lot of them were sponsored, or you all, you all gave, gave uh, some money to help them go. Uh, they wouldn't have gone unless you had kind of paid their way. So um, he just, some of them came up to him last night and said, tell, tell the church thank you for helping us to, to uh, get away. So we're grateful that we're a part of that, and uh, it does look like they're having a good time. Uh, roller coasters are not my idea of a good time, uh, but... Still remember when my kids, uh, we were at a park like that, and my, uh, my kids came up to me and said, oh, this is a, uh, they go, this is like a low-level roller coaster. You don't have to worry about it. Well, it turned out it was one of those corkscrew things where you're going upside down and everything. I could have killed them. I mean, <laughs> pastor's children, and they're lying to me. Uh, but uh, anyway, those are, the, those are the shots for you to, uh, for you to see. Ron Hanna, Ken Barton, and Rich Schauber all... Uh, shared a rendition of "I'll Fly Away" last week, and uh, it was uh, it was well it was well well received. Um, Deb Deb Bunch is here, as you know. Elder Carpenter um, is her uh, grandmother. She's still in Camden Clark. Okay, waiting to get in a nursing home in Belpre, so she's there, kind of fighting an infection. Carolyn Duncan, her uh, knee surgery has been rescheduled for August 23rd. Just been through a tough time, so her address is listed for you. encourage you to send her a card. Uh, Fred and Deb Fenton are in Kenya. Uh, Kim Jackson's probably coming home. Uh, when they get back, I'll, I'll show you the picture. Apparently, Deb sold Fred to an African tribe. Um, <laughs> and uh, apparently, uh, she gave them a cow for them to take Fred. It's a long story, but I actually have the pictures to show you when they get here. Um, Jason, uh, Jason George, uh, Jennifer Beaver's brother, it's a good time to pray for him, um, still, still recovering, but um, still, has, uh, still, has a ways, still has a ways to go. Steve Matheny is going to have a PET scan following his infusions uh, this Tuesday, uh, think of him. Sendo O'Brien had knee surgery on August 17th. Um, Sela Andrea Stanley, a newborn as of August 2nd. Uh, born with uh, some seizures and, uh, and possible brain bleed. So that's uh, Maria Keene's great-granddaughter. They're asking for prayer. And uh, Cheryl Winkler is home following uh, the removal of a kidney and is, uh, is doing, doing pretty well. Um, Pam McLean's friend, Linda Brownfield, is currently at Marietta Memorial, ongoing tests. And then our sympathy goes out to um, uh, Suzanne Halterman at the passing of her mom, uh, Edith, the um, service We'll be at Levitt's uh, Tuesday at 11 with a viewing Monday at 6, 6 to 8. Um, Sandra Johnston passed away last night. Rhonda, uh, Rhonda uh, called me and asked to, that if we would tell everybody. So keep, keep uh, Rob and Rhonda, uh, Leah and uh, Anna, and Michelle Weaver all in your prayers and the rest of the family. 
Um, arrangements are not finalized, but it's through Levitt's. And then uh, Blaine Hess, who just sang for us, uh, his good friend, uh, D. Campbell, passed away. Is the service going to be this week? Yeah, okay. Um, Deanie Kendall told me about her son, uh, Rick Van Fossen, was hospitalized with COVID, and then some other things happened this week. So Deanie said it's just been a tough, kind of been a tough week. So if you'd make sure and encourage uh, Deanie today. Uh, Linda Mitchell is in uh, Camden Clark ICU with bacterial pneumonia. Her husband uh, is da Danny. I, I published it as David, but he's providing care. Um, they're friends of the uh, uh, Danny and Linda are friends of the Nicholsons. They uh, uh, they mentioned that they're really thankful that Evan Freeze and David Sims built a uh, ramp up to their front porch, and Linda's been able to get into the house over the last uh, few months be because of that. And then uh, Mike and Marcy Brown, our missionaries in Peru, are encouraging us to pray this week. And I sent out a prayer guide. Uh, we'll send you a prayer guide if, uh, if you'd like for us to. Um, any other corrections or additions? Well, let's, uh, let's sing together. church. Father, many of us are part of other churches uh, as well. I'm just thankful for the witness that is here in the Middle Ohio Valley of people who gather to worship you, who pool their resources and their talents, and uh, we are making a difference in our own small way. We are interacting with people, finding out what their needs, praying with them, loving them, uh, and hopefully, Father, pointing them back to the only hope, uh, which is you. Father, uh, we, we struggle sometimes to know uh, what our purpose is and whether or not there's a plan, uh, but you have um, uh, you have shown us that there is a purpose and there is a plan, and that plan is found through your Son. Um, help us, Father, to realize that your Spirit is drawing us to you, and as uh, Bob Naylor shared, sometimes the journey is a long one, and uh, little seeds are planted along the way, and then finally a word is spoken or a verse is read, and uh, someone's heart is uh, is captured. So may we be part of that process. We know that some, some plant the seed, some water, water, but you're the one who gives the growth and you're the one who brings salvation. So help us, Father, as a church to continue to serve and love and care for one another. We'd ask you especially to be with the Holterman family, the Johnston family, um, the Campbell family as they are grieving the loss of someone very special and we will come alongside and help them uh, in the days to come. Be with those in the hospitals, those in the care facilities, those who are home and not able to get out, those on Facebook and Zoom that uh, feel a part of us uh, and are not, for different reasons, able to be with us in person. We just ask that you'll continue to help us to keep our focus, that we would be open to ways that you want to fill us, and then to keep our minds and our hands open that we can give out. So continue to guide us in this service, and we, uh, we praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So for the month of uh, August, we are 
looking at how life has changed uh, since uh, since COVID. And uh, I told you I was uh, I was listening to a, a series uh, in a, in another church, and I just liked how he he nailed five areas, and uh, I've kind of taken his areas and run with them. Um, so far, uh, we the five realities are social distancing, the wearing of masks, hoarding supplies, uh, increased media intake, and the discovery of a vaccine. So uh, two weeks ago, we, uh, we looked at uh, social distancing, and the idea is that we may still have to distance from one another, but, but in that, on that week, we looked at the idea that over COVID, there have been um, conflicts that have caused distance. You have uh, interacted with someone over politics or over how the virus is being dealt with, and there has been a separation, and you're not talking, or there's just not a good, there's just not a good connection there. So there's distance, and so we talked about how grace can fill the gap when there's a distance between us and others. And then last week, we looked at masks, and, and we may still have to wear masks while we're fighting this Delta variant in different ways. I don't know. It's still kind of playing out before us. But we talked about the idea that sometimes we, we can allow the mask that covers our mouth to slip down and it can cover our heart. And there's some aspect of our life, there's some secret area, there's some dark place. And, and the only way for us to go forward is to unmask that and to give God access to it so that he can work. And today we look at the idea of hoarding. And to bring this issue home, I'll say two words, toilet paper. Um, Mona and I were coming home from, uh, from Mingo. Yeah, I've got some cartoons here. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and show these. These are the, these are the cartoons that uh, I just found that dealt with, car, that dealt with this topic. There you find uh, kind of a back alley deal where uh, apparently toilet paper is as valuable as uh, drugs. Um, and then there's uh, another one here. This would be March Madness. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a creative way to kind of bring it together. Uh, another one I found was, uh, I, I grant you three wishes as long as they're not hand sanitizer, face mask, or toilet paper. Uh, the one things I can't get you. Um, this one's good. Not one to panic in a crisis. Fred calmly and prudently converts his toilet paper silos into gasoline storage tanks. Um, a reminder that we were hoarding gasoline because of the problems of the uh, refinery and the Russian hack. Um, uh, this one is my dad and me. Uh, one day, son, this will all be yours <laughs> uh, because we simply cannot throw it away. We, we just have to keep it to ourselves. This is a mom talking to her daughter. I don't think you're getting the point of this exercise. Toss, donate, and uh, keep. Um, mostly, mostly keeping. Uh, I think uh, that's it, yeah. We were, um, we were coming home from uh, Mingo after visiting with the Nicholsons, and uh, we had been following the news, and... Uh, the news was is that there was no toilet paper out there. Uh, uh, we called back to Parkersburg. He's like, yeah, I'm mostly, mostly gone. So there's this Walmart out in the middle of nowhere, and I'm looking at Mona, and we pull into the Walmart thinking, well, maybe, maybe, we'll get, maybe we'll find some toilet paper on our way back to Parkersburg. Sure enough, you get to that aisle. It is empty, nothing. Uh, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, all right, well, we'll figure this out. Uh, and then this, uh, this guy rolls up with a pallet of, uh, of boxes of toilet paper, like six feet high. And <laughs> it was like uh, people started running from all over the stores, and he's like throwing it out. And uh, we, got, we got, I think, we got ours. The Nicholson's like took like six or seven of them. And, uh, I think, I'm like, really? Do you really have to go there? Uh, James White says, over the last 15 months, some people have turned inward, become selfish and self-absorbed. Uh, they've adopted a me-first uh, mentality. Some have given into a look-out-for-number-one mentality. They've started hoarding uh, toilet paper. What started with hoarding toilet paper became a full-blown, self-serving, me-against-the-world mindset. We stopped caring about other people and started caring about ourselves. We will defeat this virus, but can we defeat the selfish spirit that puts our needs above others and encourages us to get and hold on to what we need? There's no question that we live sometimes in a very selfish, materialistic world where our worth is determined by our income and the stuff that we have. But we need to remember the words of Jesus who said, what does it profit a person if he gain the world but lose his soul? And so it's easy for us to focus on the temporary and, and lose track of those things that are, that are eternal. So two images uh, that I've... Um, by the way, you all get... Uh, there's a 
visual image in this sermon, which uh, there will be a uh, $2 surcharge for the, uh, for the visual image. You don't, you don't get it for free. You can just kind of send it in. Um, two, uh, two images, uh, clenched fist and open hand. Uh, the clenched fist, as I thought about the clenched fist, uh, it, there's kind of a different, different ways to think of the clenched fist. One is just simply being closed. I'm kind of, I'm closed to anything you might want to tell me. There's also a sense in which the clenched fist is holding on to something tightly. I've got it, and I'm going to keep it. Uh, and then the third idea of clenched fist, uh, which I've had people literally uh, have clenched fist in my face because they're ready to hit me. Uh, there's a, the anger of the clenched fist that's going to take someone out. You can, you can go through life kind of with your, your fist clenched, either uh, closed off, holding on, and angry, or you can open up your hand and receive fully what God wants to give you, and not just receive it, but, uh, but share it. And then there, uh, the image that kind of goes along with that are uh, baskets and barns, and this comes out of the story of the rich fool. We can uh, go through life as though we have a basket, like the disciples who were handing out bread, and it was in the basket, and then they just held it out, and as they gave it out, more was there. Or we can be like the rich fool who took all that he had and he stored it in a silo or a barn like that and made sure that it was uh, secure. One's closed and one, uh, one is open. So I want to read to you now uh, from Luke 12, uh, 13 to 21, the, the story of the, of the rich fool. It says there, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, because life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Then he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded in an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with everyone who stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. So uh, in this story, there is someone, there's a man who cries out with a question in a crowd, calls out to Jesus and says, Jesus, I need you to help me, uh, and probably wanted Jesus to rule, uh, kind of help me in this inheritance dispute that I have with my brother. I need to get what's coming to me. Jesus saw his heart and said, watch out for greed. Watch out for a greedy spirit because your life is not determined by what you own by who you are connected to. Money is like a boa constrictor that you're sleeping with. And you may think that it's not going to take over, but slowly it is wrapping itself around your heart and it will squeeze the life out of you until it paralyzes you. Paul said the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and people who want money find themselves in ruin and destruction. And I know you know that's true because it's either happened to you or someone you know. They got too focused on money and stuff and their life came crumbling down. They were successful failures in that they missed what was most important uh, in, in life. So the rich man was irresponsible in three ways. I just want to give you kind of a brief overview. was irresponsible in three ways. Number one, he was irresponsible to others uh, in the sense that he forgot the idea that he was blessed, but he wasn't blessed so that he could sit back and enjoy his blessing. He was blessed so that he could share it with others. That's the whole point. God, God, has, God has blessed you, and the point is not for you to store it all in, in, a, in a safe place so you've got it and it's all yours. Nothing wrong with saving, nothing wrong with having uh, enough for retirement or looking to the future, but if this is all you're about, you're going to be uh, miserable, and the Bible is going to call you. Uh, a, uh, a fool. Um, notice uh, in ele 11 times in three verses, the rich fool says, I, me, or mine. He was thinking about himself. 
His life slogan was, as I've said before, get all you can, can all you get, and then sit on the can. Uh, and no one looks good sitting on a can. They just, they just don't. The rich man was irresponsible to others. He was irresponsible to himself. He really believed that life consisted in making and storing stuff. He said, I've got what I need. Eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, life is good. Money and possessions give us the illusion of security and safety, and they obscure our deeper needs for salvation and for serving. Uh, there was a rich man who went to his minister. He had a business. He had done very well. He was successful and had a lot of money. And, but he said, but I feel empty. And the minister just had him do a very simple thing. He had him go to the window and look. He says, look out, this, look out my office window. And the office window looked out over a park. And he said, what do you see? And he said, well, I see people walking and I see children playing. He said, take two steps to the right. And two steps to the right was a wall and on the wall was a mirror. He said, look, look, in, look in the mirror. What do you see? He said, I see myself. And the minister said, well, here's the deal. Both the window and the mirror are made out of glass, but the mirror has a little bit of silver over the surface. And he says, once you add a little bit of silver, you stop seeing others and you see only yourself. That's a keeper. But add a little bit of silver and you stop seeing others and you see only yourself. And that shouldn't be true of anyone who says that they are a follower of Christ. John Wesley says, make all you can. And then he says, save all you can. But then his third point, give. Give all you can. That's a good word. So the rich man was irresponsible to others. He forgot to share. He was irresponsible to himself. He really thought the goal of life was to, uh, to get more money and more stuff. And he was irresponsible to God because he didn't realize that there would be a day of accounting that there would be a day of judgment. And so God comes to him in a moment and says, you fool, you, this very night your life is demanded of you. Um, and this is, will be how it is for anyone who stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. You fool, you laid up the wrong treasure in the wrong place for the wrong reason. Paul says we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we will take nothing out of it. You've heard the old saying, there is not a, there's never been a U-Haul behind a hearse. And that's a good, you've never seen the hearse roll out of the funeral home with a U-Haul behind it because you're not taking it. You're not taking any of it uh, with you. The clothes, uh, the special clothes or suits or dresses that they make for, for bodies that are laid out in the funeral home have no pockets. I didn't know that until I read that. There's no pockets in funeral clothes. You don't need a pocket. You're not taking anything with you at all. Life is short and we will give an account of ourselves to God one day. What are you doing with what God gave you? Jesus said, sell your possessions, give them to the poor, and then you'll find treasure in heaven that will last forever. So what I wanted to do, I just wanted to contrast a basket with the barn. The basket would be the, um, the disciples who were going out uh, as Jesus was feeding the 5,000 and Jesus put the fish and the loaves in the basket and they just sort of waded out into the crowd and as they held their open basket open, there was fish and bread and people took it out and as they took things out, apparently the miracle was it just automatically replenished and as they gave, as they, as they gave out, God gave in. Isn't that a neat way to live? You, you're open, you're, you're saying, God, I'm going forth in faith, I'm giving out as you give in and it's a... Um, it's a mystery, but a miracle. Some of us live like this. I'm going to store it away. I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to say to myself, eat, drink, and be merry because you're set. Which, by the way, I pulled this out of the attic. And uh, I don't know why this is in here, but this is Cookie Monster. <laughs> uh, uh, Cookie Monster was the last, the last kid who played with our silo. Which, by the way, is a pretty good image because I don't remember the Cookie Monster sharing with anybody. You know, he's just kind of eating it. It's, it's his cookie. and He's, he's good. But is this you? Is this you? Have you stored it away? You're set. You're good. It's closed off. Is there any, is there any joy in that? Um, well, I, I pray. I pray that I would be like, more like the basket, less like the barn. If we are followers of Jesus, we are not into hoarding. We're into heaven and helping people to get there. Remember what Jesus said, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life 
as a ransom for many. If, if, you're, if you're about Jesus, you're not about the clenched fist holding on. You're about the open hand that is, that is open to receive and open to give. That is where, that's where the adventure is. You guys know people that are closed off, and they're closed off in every sense, and they don't have life. And we want to try to, you're encouraging them to in some way, in some way open up. On the last night of his life, what did Jesus do? He's up in the upper room, and all the, the disciples have traveled through roads that have dirt and dung and dust on their feet. And what did Jesus do? He didn't wait for a household servant to, to clean the feet. He took, a, he took a, a towel. He took a basin. And Jesus bent down and washed the feet of his disciples, and he said, if this, if I am your master and I've done this for you, then this is what I want you to be doing for others. It's an unpleasant inconvenient task that we are due for others but he said I'm doing this for you I want you to go out doing it for others and that's a, a that's a good reminder hoarding happens when we develop an emotional attachment to temporary physical objects and it makes it hard for us to let go or release I don't know what you hoard but I hoard books and papers uh, ask my wife I've got uh, 50 years of books, and I've got three different libraries <laughs> that are full. And so I am, uh, as a result of this sermon, I am releasing uh, my books. I am going to keep a few, but they're gone. They're gone. And uh, I'll put some in the hallway. Uh, if any of you want any of my hoarded books, you can have them. And then Parchment Valley is starting a library for the uh, students that are going through the uh, extension course, seminary students, and so uh, I talked to Frank Miller, and he said, I'll take them all, and I've said, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to be, somebody wants to drive with me to Parchment Valley a hundred times, uh, we, we can enjoy life together. There is this lady on the TV show Hoarders I was watching, and she's in one of these houses where there's rotten food and rodents, and there's piles so high that they literally get stuck. I mean, these, these houses are like dangerous because the piles fall on them and they can't get out. She was in one of those. It was condemned, and they are literally pulling her out from a pile from one of these hoarding houses. And she, she expresses her, her thoughts she expressed to the camera was, but she, she looked back into this mess, and she says, but that's my life. She said, I can't leave. She said, that, this is my life. Her life is all of the stuff and the debris that she's just uh, loaded up around her. And some of us, I mean, I can relate. My basement, my garage, I mean, I just, I uh, take after my dad in, uh, in kind of a sense that I keep a lot of things. But how do you, how do you break the spirit of hoarding? We need to be servants. Uh, and uh, let me give you a few little points around serving. Um, we need to be servants. Number one, um, serving is how we grow. Uh, uh, serving helps us simply grow in the faith. If you want to grow up in your faith, you got to find some place where you're serving. You have to find some place where you're serving someone because as you serve, God begins to do a work in your life. That's why when the youth are out, the youth were out uh, two weeks ago just serving our members. And John said all of them came back and they're talking about what they learned by pulling weeds and helping uh, different members of our congregation. We grow up as we serve. Serving means we get into the game. You get off the bench and you get in the game and you begin to experience uh, what it means for God to, to use you. When our uh, finance team is closing, uh, Bill Gaynor always tells a story right at the close. Uh, and I wrote this one down. This was the last one he told. It, it was a... Uh, an older couple who was going to a, a marriage counselor, and they were having some marriage problems, obviously, and the uh, woman was sharing a lot of different things that bothered her, and uh, the counselor listened and listened and listened, and finally he stood up in the middle as she's going through the list of things that bothered her about her husband. He s pulls the woman up, and he kisses her, long, passionate kiss, and the counselor turned around and looked at the, old, the older man and said, now that's what she needs. Three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the man thought for a minute, and he said, well, he said, I can have her here on Monday and Wednesday, but I, but I golf on Friday. So, you see, he, didn't, he needed to get in the game himself. You see, he, needed, he didn't want the counselor to do, to do that. All right, that was my attempt at humor. And then serving helps us to fulfill God's grand design. God has prepared things for us to do in advance. There are things that God has, has for you to do. And as you do that, you will fulfill 
uh, God's kingdom purpose in your life. Someone has said, but one life to live will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. And so here are three ways, three practical ways uh, that you can begin to open up your life, open up your hands. Number one, give. Give generously. I don't uh, one, one great thing that uh, nobody in our church, church knows who gives except for our financial secretary. I have no idea what any of you give. But I know this, that collectively you all give uh, generously and you allow us, instead of always uh, worrying about paying our bills, we're able to think about ways we can reach out. And that's been that way since I've been here. Thank you for giving generously and, and, and please continue. Um, as, you, as you free up your financial resources, God does... God does a work in, in, your, in your life, and then he allows us to, to, to continue that work as well. Volunteer to serve. Uh, if by February, every week, you're going to find out about it. You just found out about both the Gideons and the audiovisual. If by February you haven't found a place to volunteer, you are dead. So you, 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 there, there is something here that you can be a part of. And I, I just want to encourage you, every Sunday you are going to hear about a ministry at Emmanuel. And each time you hear about them, I want you to pray, God, is this for me? Is this where I should plug in? Is this what I should do? I don't want to sit on the sideline. I don't want to be closed off. I want to be out there. So I want you to pray about volunteering. And then I want you to just be available and aware. Um, I was leaving a store uh, recently. And uh, as I came out of the store, there was a lady uh, who had all of her worldly belongings on a cart. You know how they have the little, kind of a, a little dolly thing. And it was, no, it was a shopping cart. And it was all piled over. And as I come out, she's going through a coin purse. I mean, look at this. I don't know if she had. And I'm thinking, okay. Now, I, I, didn't, I didn't kick off this conversation in the best way. My first comment, I went across the street and I said, <laughs> I don't know, this is great. I said, do you know where you're going to sleep tonight? Uh, that's probably not the, I, I, I know what I meant. I know what I meant, but I mean, do you know where you, but my idea was I, you shouldn't be sleeping on the sidewalk or in the park. And I, and so I had to quickly follow up with, I know, uh, I know, uh, the, the Salvation Army director and I know what goes on at the missions. And I, if you want to get into a place where you can sleep in a bed, I can make that happen or I can help you make that happen. Anyway, she, uh, we went back and forth. She said, I smoke, uh, I, sm I smoke weed, and they know that, and I can't stay there. I said, okay, that won't work. So I said, are you hungry? And she said, well, I haven't eaten in two days. I said, well, I said okay, um, uh, she, you're about three blocks from Wendy's. I said, I'll, um, I'll meet you. I'll meet you, at, uh, I'll meet you at Wendy's. And uh, she, she said, well, I have a friend at the park. Okay, you feed him too. I said, oh, yeah, bring him on, anybody. And so uh, about 15 minutes later, I, I roll into Wendy's, and and she shows up, and the guy, the guy kind of goes to the front of Wendy's, and he has his head on, the, he has his head on one of those uh, things, kind of head in his hands, like, I don't know what's going on with him. But she came in, and she ordered two, she ordered two value meals, and I was able to pay, pray, uh, pay for it and just say, you know, I, I do this because I'm part of a church and because I love the Lord, and uh, I, I, pray that, I pray this is a blessing to you. You just you keep, you keep your eyes open. You're, you're saying, God, where can you use me? Uh, that may not be the thing you should do, but I felt I, can't, I couldn't just walk by her. Um, and so how, how are you going to be used? I wanted to close with one final image, and I, because, I was thinking about, um, because I was thinking about clenched fist, I had this, you know, you have these random images from things in your life, and I shot back to preschool when I was in uh, Joyland Toyland back at the Grace United Methodist Church had a preschool. Uh, and the teacher would occasionally lead us in um, finger painting. And I don't know why. It has to be maybe I'm German or something. But this, the concept of putting large pieces of white paper out and then glooping this, uh, uh, the, the, the colors onto, the, onto this paper and then you smear it over with your hands. That was so disgusting to me as a preschooler that I remember sitting in my chair and I clenched both of my fists like this and I had them on my knees and I was sitting there like, I dare you. I dare you to move me out of this place. I am not going to, paint needs a paintbrush, not your hand. 
And I just, and it, the reason I know this is it was, it was on my report card. The teacher said, I think your son has some problems. <laughs> we need, you might need, that might need to be in counseling. But as soon as I got the finger prating thing out, I sat in my chair with my fist clenched. And I'll never, and one time they, they let me go. But one, one day, this, this wonderful, nice teacher stood me up and she made me stand up and come over to the table. And I still had my fist clenched like that. And finger by finger, she opened up my hand and she said, it's really, really not that bad. And she put my hand in there and, and I began to see, well, maybe it wasn't bad as I, bad as I thought. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of people who come to the end of their lives and they're going to have like, I, like my preschool picture, their fists are clenched against others and against God, and they don't need anything, and I'm, I'm okay, and I've got what I've got. People, this is a picture of hell. By the way, if you want a picture of hell, hell is a bunch of people with cl clenched fists, keeping what they have and living in anger that they may lose it. And you know what, you know what people need? They need you and me like that preschool teacher Finger by finger, <laughs> we pry the hand open and we, so that someone is able to open their hands up to God, receive what he wants to give them. This is the way to live with your arms open. And as I've said many times, how is Jesus in his final moment? How do you picture Jesus? His arms are wide and I see his hands are open asking all to come to him. Let's, let's pray. Father, if we're honest, we, we live a lot of our life with our hands closed. We store up in barns and we think we're set. Help us, Father, to think in terms of baskets, open baskets that are held out and we, uh, they, they fill up. As we give, you fill back in. We can't outgive you, God. And Father, help us to see that we need to open up our hands to receive your love and your spirit. Um, today, Father, if there's someone listening who, who knows that they have been closed off to you in some way, maybe they need to, maybe they need, need to call out to you. Maybe they will t t even tonight. Um, we just would ask, Father, that this would be a church that is open and giving to the world. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I did put this uh, church here for a reason. I just remembered. Um, I pray that our church... is not closed, but open, huh? uh, to receive what God <laughs> wants to give to us and then give out freely. Uh, if you, today as we close, if you need prayer, if you'd like to receive Christ or to join our church, you're welcome to come forward as we sing one verse of Freely, Freely. Thank you today for the privilege of being able to gather together. Father, where we have clenched our fist and we're holding things tightly, Father, as you, as you work in us, open up our hands, open up our hearts, and help us to receive all that you would like to give us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Oh, good. Good enough. Good job. I was. I, 